Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Inner Beauty TV. I'm your host, Nicole Michelle, founder and femininity mentor for the Inner Beauty Movement. We're all about helping women reconnect um, with their feminine core, their feminine power, their center, while simplifying the pathway to marriage. So if that seems like something you'd be interested in, definitely, definitely give us a subscribe and like. Go ahead and do that as you file in. I appreciate that. Appreciate you all hanging out with me today. We have a lot to talk about. And thank you so much. If you are just now clicking on this channel for the very first time, thank you and welcome. Hopefully you like this tribe. We'd love to have you. And for those of you who are returning guests, I appreciate you. And those of you who have been a part of the family for quite some time, I appreciate you as well. Um, I apologize for the sneezes ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> random acts of sneezing will happen. I apologize. My throat is still irritated. So I apologize if, if I'm clearing my throat and sneezing, but I'm on the tail end of a cold and you all know how that is. Shout out to Ohio giving it to me. Yes. Love it. Love it. Love it. What comes with the snow also comes with the cold and I haven't had a real good cold and probably a few years. So um, this is new. <laughs> again, you're like going through this again. So shout out to my husband who's been very, very supportive. I'm telling you all, get a husband. They are so much more supportive than bosses. Let me tell you, if I had a boss, I would have had to call in, as you see. Um, and my husband was just like, no streaming, no internet, just chill out, get well. Um, and he's so understanding and so sweet. So shout out to my husband on that. The best husband in the world. Love him with all my heart. Shout out to everybody in the audience. Shout out to the best mods on YouTube. I appreciate you so, so very, very much. You ladies are just the ultimate uh, supporters and I appreciate you. And I pray God's blessings on you. Um, and shout out to everybody on other social media platforms listening in. Today, I don't plan to be before you long because I don't want to be uh, uh, sneezing and coughing and hacking <laughs> too long. So I don't want to push my throat too much. We don't want to push a good thing. We're going to get out of here while the getting is good. Um, but for those of you who have checked out our marriage ability rooms, thank you so very much. Um, and we plan to do one Thursday if everything goes well and all of the parts fall into place. We plan to be back Thursday with another marriage ability room. As you know, I do no, uh, no longer do public one-on-ones. I don't offer them to the public only for my current clients. So the only way really to do a one-on-one -on -one with me would have to be the marriage ability room. And if you're on the app, Thank you so much. The app is growing. The ladies are connecting a lot of information shared on the app that I wouldn't dare share publicly simply because it's a woman's thing. And we have to have our space where we can grow and be better women. So if you're interested in the Future Wives Club, the Homemakers Hub, um, the Preppy Girls Club, all things preppy, travel, dress, all of that is included on the app. A lot of information shared. If you want to prepare to be a wife, a homemaker, um, all of that good stuff that's on the app. A lot of good stuff. Just go check it out. Available on your Google Play and Apple stores. We'd love to have you. Thank you so very much. Shout out to all of the ladies who've been following the inner beauty movement that have recently become engaged and are currently planning their weddings. A lot of greasy talk. 
around certain spaces about what the inner beauty movement, what the player over here, Nicole Michelle is doing. But let me tell you, Nicole Michelle is doing her job, baby. The ladies that follow me and actually do the work get husbands. They become more feminine. Countless of women have become more feminine, more in touch. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. See what I'm talking about? They become more in touch with their feminine core and their essence due to the inner beauty movement and the work and our body of work. Thank you so much. Just one person coming back to me saying that they've been helped by my work is what I do this for. To a lot of women, shout out to Hannah, Miss Hannah, beautiful uh, fiance there. Um, her fiance proposed to her, I believe, over the New Year's um, Day weekend. And she's been listening to us for a while. Uh, Tamika, shout out to Tamika, who's been in our audience. She's recently became engaged. Shout out to Ivana, who will be tying the knot with her uh, fiance in June. So all the folks with their lips on Nicole Michelle, the inner beauty movement and things like that, I'm beginning to think it might be jealousy. Maybe they want somebody for themselves and they're kind of jealous. Uh, they don't understand the business model. They don't understand that I prayed on the inner beauty movement before I even did a, a video, a post, a book, and anything. I pray that what comes out of my mouth can edify other people. And listen, if you can sit up under me <laughs> with my directness and my firmness and um, me being really direct about the truth, then you can withstand just about anything. And women are getting married. If you want to get married and you come to me, you're going to get married. Simple as that. I will not stop. I will not turn. I will not stop turning over um, every uh, stone Unturned, I will not leave any stones unturned until I get you to your goal. And so what I've found out is that women who work more closely with me have gotten more success than the women who kind of just take the course and bounce and women who come to me trolling and curious about my business model, women who are just hanging out um, because they like the topics and things like that. What I found is that women who actually wanted to get married and came to me and made me work <laughs> Ivana made me work. She was like, Miss Nicole, I need you again. I need you. She made me work. And here we are. So, ladies, it's all up to you. I'm here. Use me while I can. Be used. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. With that being said, let's get on into it. Let's get on into what we're talking about today. Feminine women, for feminine women, girlfriend to wife transformation. What does that mean? Winner is here, ladies. Winter is here. We've talked a long time about what it would be like when winter is here. I'm not talking about the real winter. Um, shout out to all the cities that are in the midst of winter right now. You know, after February, I'm over snow. So I got about a few more days to enjoy snow. Really, after Christmas, I'm ready for spring. <laughs> and I'll tolerate winter all the way up until about Valentine's Day. After Valentine's Day, I'm sick of snow. I'm sick of the cold weather. I'm ready for spring. Um, and what we try to tell people all the time, especially people who have harms and farms and homesteads, is that you prepare for the winter. You prepare. You do all your planting and things like that, and you harvest right before the winter, right before the ground gets cold. You want to harvest. You want to get the best out of the land before the winter comes. Well, in the dating world, the same can be said. Women need to get the best out of what they're going to get while the getting is good. Right now, ladies, winter is here. What I mean by winter is here. Men are acting a plum fool. Some of them that were already unhinged are really coming off the screws. But now you have the good guys are saying that they're checking out. Now, I'm not talking about passport bros and folks who don't build here going over there and, you know, engaging in tricking and hoeing in other countries, um, you know, paying for whores in other countries. I'm not talking about that. Um, I mean, actually, they'll make me stand up and take a listen and step back from what I said when I see them in other countries building. 
<laughs> when I see them building entire communities, not communities, but cities over in other countries and making it, making a complete difference in other countries, then I'll, I'll care. But until then, I don't care about passport bros and things like that. Um, you still have your passport, which means you're still a citizen of the U.S., which means you have no intentions of really leaving. Um, you're just visiting and tricking and things like that. I'm not impressed with that. <clears throat> Go do you. Um, when these men are like leaving at a rate of 20 to 30 to 40 percent and they're building entire nations in other places, then I'll. I'll take a listen. Until then, I'm not concerned about whole trick games. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'm not talking about men like that who sit around and whine and complain about women who didn't choose them and things like that. We don't we don't concern ourselves with losers because losers can't get us to the next destination. We don't concern ourselves with men who spend a whole enormous amount of time telling women about themselves. Tell yourself about yourself. Get yourself together. Get your life together before you start jumping in somebody's daughter's face, telling her about herself. Tell me what kind of assets you have. Tell me what kind of accomplishments you've achieved in life besides working a job. Do you have anything to show for the few years that you've had? Do you have life insurance? <laughs> if you die right now, who's going to care? Who, who do we call to pick up your body and bury it? Oh, wait. You don't, you're not cool with any of your family because you hate women that much. Excuse me, pardon me, not listening. Until you can actually impose sanctions and punish women, not physically, but punish women by your absence, we really don't care about your presence. And I said what I said. So if that's you and that hurts your feelings, sorry. But I mean... You want me to tell the women the truth. I got to tell you the truth. The truth is we don't like losers. The truth is we never like mediocre men. You, you're, pl you're plenty to say about mediocre looking women, but we have plenty to say about mediocre performing men. How about that? So um, the fact of the matter is we understand, women understand a lot. A lot of women have accepted that they won't get married. That's the flat out truth. I got it. I accept it. I understand it. And then there are a lot of women who are, um, you know, Nicole, what I have to do <laughs> to get a husband. I like pick me's. Pick me's get picked. Who wants to be a leftover? Who wants to be, you know, that, that cold piece of pizza that's been left out overnight and nobody's like, you want it? No, I don't want it. Mm. You don't want to be that, right? Everybody wants to get chosen. Everybody wants to be on somebody's list. Well, somebody, Everybody wants to be desired on some level, even if it's not marriage, you want to be desired. So I'm talking to those women today. I'm talking to women. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I apologize. <coughs> women want to be chosen. I, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about women who've been called pick me's, pick Misha's and all the other foolishness, whatever. Whatever, onion, onion, tomato, tomato, radish, radish, who cares? At the end of the day, do, do I get what I want? That I want to talk to those women today. So if you are listening and you're not quite sure you want to get married, that's fine. You can still listen. Um, if you're here for the femininity um, tidbits, um, you're welcome to sit in on that as well. Um, if you're not sure about marriage or if you're in a relationship right now and you want to get to the next level, um, you're welcome to sit in. And to those women who want to be married, buckle up because I'm going to tell you there's a transformation that needs to be made. I don't believe in, <clears throat> excuse me, beating up on women. Um, that's just not productive. Um, and women are the heart of society. And when the heart is broken, it doesn't perform. And women act all out of pocket because the hearts are broken for whatever reason. And I come to restore. So this is not a red pill manosphere channel. Um, although you might hear some, uh, some of the same points, um, but it's not a red pill. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm so sorry. Manosphere channel. That's not what this is. 
I come here and I'm praying as I'm speaking because I want this to land well, because a lot of women want to be restored. Um, they know the path that they've been going down is wrong. And so me fussing at them and telling them the whys and the wherefores just isn't going to help. All right. Um, so I believe in restoration. And somebody said, why do women need to reconnect with their femininity? The same reason why you're masculine, because women have stepped so far away from what makes them a woman that they need to be reminded of their power and reconnect with that. And I, I noticed that it's usually single women who, who talk the most about um, women reconnecting with their femininity. If, if anything, women who have a problem with that probably need to get married first before you start attacking other women. That would make sense. Whew. Now, Girlfriend to wife mindset. Men are setting the terms now. That's what I mean by winter is here. Men are setting the terms and women may not like the terms. And you say, I don't care. I don't care what men say. I don't care. Fine. You don't care. And if you don't care, does that mean that your money is in the right place that if something were to happen to you and you can no longer work, you have systems in place by which to make sure your bills are paid, that your house is bought. I mean, you're bragging that you own property, that you have a house. Do you have systems in place to make sure that that gets paid off? You know, a mortgage is 30, 40 years. Are you prepared to keep working by yourself to pay off that property? Well past 60 if you're okay with that, hey, I have nothing to say. If you're not okay with that or you never thought about it, now's the time to, I have some water right here. <laughs> Thank you. Now's the time to consider um, that. Now's the time to consider what your future is going to look like without a man. Because a lot of women are going, you don't need a man. Stop listening to Nicole. She's a pick me. Stop listening to those pick me shies. Fair enough. Are you prepared to live life without a man? If you are, great. Then I don't really have anything to say to you and nobody else does either. And you tell all those other people trying to give you the whys and the wherefores, you tell them where they can go because you have it all figured out. You have your money figured out. You have your medical care figured out. You have your companionship, what you're going to do about that. You have all of that figured out. So you don't really need anybody else's two cents. So you're not pressed about what men are doing. We shouldn't see you anywhere talking about what men are doing, their choices and what they do, because you say you don't care, right? But for women who do care, winter is here. And what I mean by that is it's now a buyer's market and men are dictating the terms by which they get in relationships. And for the last 30 to 40 years, it hasn't been that way. Uh, really, since the beginning of time, it hasn't been that way. Women have dictated the terms of relationships. Women have dictated the terms of sex. And in the event that it was forced, you know, that that's not what we're talking about. For the most part, women dictated how sex was going to go down, if it was going to go down. And the relationships mm -hmm. um, were determined by the woman. And if she wanted a relationship, a relationship happened. Because in the last, you know, few since the beginning of man, men wanted women. They knew that was the only way they were going to have consistent sex. There was a system in place that held women to morality. And if she stepped out of that system, there was pay. <laughs> she had to pay, right? And so with the onset of feminist ideology, the onset of the women's movement, they kind of moved away from that and said they busted out of that morality uh, cloak and said, we can do what we want. Well, there's consequences to doing what you want. They never anticipated that men would push back. They always thought men would just fall in line. And what they perceived as male supremacy would automatically turn into female supremacy. 
And in certain places, you can kind of see where that's headed. There's women running the show. Women have the last say. Women control the narrative. That's all well and good. But if you're a feminine woman who wants a family and you want a husband, that's uncomfortable to be around a bunch of women sitting around kiki and kakad. And you're like, where are the men? And the reason why you want the men is because that means less work for you. That means less hard work for you, right? When, women, when men are around, women still work, but it's not hard. With the absence of men, women work harder. And I don't know about you, but I don't like working hard. I did that. I'm good. I don't like working hard. I was always been the, the I was always the type of woman that needed a man in my life. Things went weird when I didn't have a man. I'm sorry. If I didn't have a man that was dependable that I could call when I needed him, I felt weird. Now, for some of you, you just get out there and you know, change your own tire. You get out there and make your own um you know, make it work and do what you have to do. Shout out to you. But me, on the other hand, I've always been girly. Girly, I don't like working hard. Working hard for me is grocery shopping. Figuring out, should I get these pork chops or should I get some more chicken? Working hard for me is trying to hang some drapes. <clears throat> and so, you know, the corporate rat race for me was... I was a fish out of water. I did it because I had to work and earn money to live. But was that something that I was cut out to do like long term forever? Some women, you're cut out to just get out there and work. Like you're built workhorses. Shout out to you. Some of you like working. You are creative. You add value to the market. You add value to your profession. You are in the legal field. You're an attorney. Uh, you're a judge. Shout out to you. You bring value. Um, you're a, a medical doctor. You're a nurse. Shout out to you. I'm in no way, shape or form, sh uh, um, shading you. We need you. But for those of you who are working a job and you don't really have a purpose and you know this isn't what you're cut out to do. You need to listen to me today. You need to listen to me today. I actually enjoy grocery shopping. <laughs> I actually have to buy a new vacuum cleaner. And uh, I like the, the brand Shark. I like that brand. Shark is the best brand. Uh, my housekeeper back in Atlanta, she used uh, Shark um, appliances and... So I said, let me get me a shark vacuum cleaner and I love it. Um, so I'm going to have to get me a new one. I love ninja appliances and things like that. See, when women get married, they switch their mindset from girlfriend to wife. They start thinking about how to make their home space better. <clears throat> it's no longer about them. It's about family. That's what happens when you switch from girlfriend to wife. <laughs> Angela says she just purchased the vacuum. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for the cash app. Appreciate that. People send me cash apps when I'm not even on air. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for thinking about me. <clears throat> People are looking at the video after that. So when I say winter is coming, I mean, it's a buyer's market. When a buyer's market means the buyers determine how the market is going to move. So the seller can't say, well, I'm charging this. And if you don't want to pay it, somebody else is going to buy it at my price. Matter of fact, if you give me too much trouble, I'm going to give it to somebody else. Um, we don't have a market like that, ladies. The market is favoring the men. And if you recall, I know Miss V was with me back in the day. Miss Devin RM was with me back in the day. Let me tell you something. I told you all 
years ago, I said, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. That is the worst. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I told you all time was on my side. I told you all that the women comp um, clowning me for talking about femininity, ironically, are talking about femininity now. The women clowning me talking about marriage or ironically talking about marriage now. <laughs> the women who were talking to, calling me a pick me, an old woman, all of those women are talking about what I'm talking about now. All of those women now are talking about being housewives. All of those women are now talking about traditionalism. I mean, they gave me the riot act. You know, <laughs> I would just pop on random videos and hear people just throwing shade. And I'm like, I'm, I'm a little bitty channel. Why would anybody care what I'm thinking or saying? <clears throat> and now all of the bigger channels with goo gobs of subs and talking about what I talked about back in 2018 and 19 and was clowned about it, clowned about being talking about femininity. Now they are femininity gurus. Make it make sense. You know why? Because a lot of women realize they're trying to get ahead of the curve which they're actually behind the curve. If you follow the inner beauty movement, we were talking about the soft life back in 2018. They just now caught up with the, the soft life. We, talk, we talked about that eons ago. And that's why this new movement of soft life is kind of crappy because they the concept is wrong. And we talked about traditionalism back in 2018 and 19. So a lot of, a lot of conversations that folks are having, we already had this. Like, you all are late. Catch up. That's why <laughs> I said time is on my side. I knew that people would eventually catch up and they would eventually start talking about what we're talking about over here. Toya says she was back doing a three and four hour lives. Toya, let me tell you something. <clears throat> Susan, people used to clown me. Your lives are too long. <clears throat> And you know what? Back in the day, they probably were. Three and four, five-hour lives was probably a bit much. But Toya, you know what? People are asking me. Not a week goes by that someone's not sending me an email, a message asking me to get access to those three and four-hour lives. Because the value that I added back then, that stuff that you heard other big YouTubers that recently passed away. A lot of that stuff I talked about back in 2019, 18. <laughs> and so now they want access to that because now winter is here. But when you're with the inner beauty movement, we, we've been ahead of the curve. We've talked about um, traditionalism for years now. Thank you, Toya, for the support. We've talked about 50-50 um, marriages back in 2019. We talked about women leaving the workforce back in 2019. People are just now catching up. That's why I said winter is here. Winter is here. It's too late to be ahead of the curve. The only way you were ahead of the curve, if you if you were listening to the inner beauty movement back then, we talked, we covered all that. <clears throat> What do women bring to the table and all that foolishness? We talked about that too. Oh, we talked about the dirty 30s, AKA the danger zone. We called it the dirty 30s over here. We, we covered that. Before that, all of that went viral. We talked about that. <laughs> we're ahead of it. So now we're ahead of the curve now. So listen up. Get your pads and pencils because I don't plan to be here long. You hear how my throat is irritated? I know, I know, I know. It's horrible. I should have had some honey tea um, and I will get some. And Honey kind of coats the throat. But men are setting the terms for relationships. And so bashy men is out. It's O-U-T. Ladies, if you want to get married, get out of those spaces bashing men. I don't care if they indirectly do it. I don't care if they throw shots at men. I don't care if they are 
doing a video about a celebrity that's cutting up. It doesn't matter. Get out of those spaces because that programming gets into you. And what happens if you listen to a lot of negativity for enough, for long enough, what ends up happening is it starts to be ingrained in you and it comes out in your attitude. That's why they tell you to read the Bible all the time. Why? Because it'll get in your spirit. It'll start becoming a part of your nature. Well, when you digest enough negative information, guess what? It becomes a part of your spirit. Get out of those spaces, ladies. Get out of that. No shade to anybody. Hey, get your hustle on however you get it on. But ladies who want to be married, you're going to have to separate yourself. And any man who's smart is not going to attach himself to a woman who's constantly around women bashing men. I don't care how you justify it. Bashing men. It has to be some balance. Now, on this channel, I have balance. That's why I'm not a red pill channel, because I bring balance. I don't, I, I'm not out here telling Sasha, it's all your fault. Devin, it's all your fault. Angela, it's all your fault. RM, it's all your fault. And not holding men responsible. In order for a family unit to operate, both parties have to be operating perfectly, right? They have to be operating in tandem. It's not all one person's fault. That's unhealthy. <laughs> Those are the people that don't truly like you. I, I love you. I'm going to tell you the truth. It might sting a little. But when people love you, <clears throat> they're going to tell you the truth. And that, that might be uncomfortable a bit. So when I say get out of those spaces bashing men, I'm, I really mean that. I don't care if you're there because they uplift a certain hue. They uplift a certain type of woman. They uplift a certain type of lifestyle. They encourage women to date outside the box, whatever whatever is mask of bashing men get out of those spaces none of that is going to help your mindset up here when you're dealing with men you need to be on point you need to understand men i'm not saying love love their dirty draws all the time i'm not saying that it's all women's fault i'm just saying understand men that's all i'm saying just understand who they are that's it right because men are controlling, women control access to sex, but men control access to marriage. And the part you might not want to hear is if they say we don't want to get married, guess what? <laughs> Nobody gets married. We don't want, well, the truly competent men are going to eventually get married because they want to reproduce and leave their seed on the planet. They want to leave a legacy. And we should be glad we should stand up and want to give them a legacy. A competent man who wants a family, shut up, be submissive, you know, cook and clean for him, decorate his home, right? Be nice to him, ask to have his kids. What are you doing? <clears throat> we don't let men like that go. The incompetent man, you can do what you want. You can jump off a cliff, drink poison. I mean, what you want us to do? You pretty much told us you don't want to be uh, what you need to be as a man. So, I mean, what do you want us to do, really? I don't know what you want. I'm going to pray for you. Pray your strength in the Lord as you jump off that mountain. But I'm not going with you. You jump alone. <laughs> what you want us to do? That's what you need to start telling these men, ladies. Look, if you're telling me you don't want to be married, if you're telling me you don't want a family, why am I listening to you? You have no value, none. Because as a woman, my value is wrapped up in being a woman and a woman who's married and can continue the legacy. Now, the feminists will tell you, ah, your womanhood is not just being a wife. Well, then what is it then? What is my value? Yes, I'm a human being that deserves breath. You're right. But what's my value if I'm not affecting the next generation? What's my value? If my if, if what's my value if I can't affect change in the world? What's my value? If I'm not affecting people's lives, you don't have to be a mother to affect people's lives in a positive way. If you're not doing that, then what is your purpose? 
right? And so that's why you have to reject men who don't want to stand in their purpose as a man. We have nothing else to talk about. You don't want to stand in your purpose as a man, but you want to sleep with me? Boo. Boo. Shoe fly. Shoe. Shoe fly. Shoe fly. Shoe. I have nothing else to talk about you. Outside of that, I need to be in spaces that edify me as a woman. Show me how to be a successful woman with a man. Don't just tell me it's all men's fault. That's like some of these spaces are just as toxic as the red pill spaces. So it's all men's fault? That didn't even sound right. <laughs> Right? What kind of men have you been dating? <laughs> right? We want to get in spaces that are balanced. We don't hold men and women's feet to the fire. I'm always skeptical of places and spaces that only talk about one side. An echo chamber, if you will. This is an echo chamber to a degree because I do want women that want to be married and want to be feminine. But outside of that, I'm balanced. I'm going to hold the men's feet to the fire as well as the women. And they don't like that. They don't like it when I do that. But a girlfriend mindset is going to keep you single. A lot of women have a matriarchal mindset. And I'm going to be talking a lot about matriarchal mindsets. You don't hear this a lot. It's touched on, but not really delved into. And I'm going to delve into it a little bit, but not today. A lot of women have a matriarchal mindset. Um, the home was imbalanced because maybe the father was there, but he was passive. Maybe you had a very domineering mother. Maybe you only had a mother. Um, maybe you were, you know, you know, shuffled uh, back and forth between different relatives. And so you really didn't have a stable upbringing. Whatever the case may be, um, your upbringing was mostly matriarchal. And because of that, you have um, your subtext of your life is the reason why I'm here, the reason why I experience things, the reason why my outlook on womanhood is because of men. Everything bad happened to you at the behest of incompetent men. And as a matriarchal mindset, you try to convince yourself that you don't have, you don't harbor negative feelings about men, but you do. Um, it comes out in your relationships. It comes, comes out in how you relate to men. You're more comfortable around women than you are men. You love all female spaces. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you borderline just like women. Um, a lot of women who are matriarchal, uh, they have a very disdain a bitter taste in their mouth to women who love men. So they'll make really, really bad names about women who love men. They'll say you're too churchy. They'll say you such a good girl. Good girls don't get anything. They'll say whores are winning. They'll gaslight good women. All of that foolishness at the, at the end of the day, they hate the fact that you love men. I don't know if they envy it or not. I just know that they hate the fact that you love men. I don't know if it's because they have an underlining. They have some LGBTQ stuff going on. I don't know. For some of them, that's probably true. That's why I still I steer clear of women who hate men. It's nothing. It's I don't know how our friendship could blossom. I'm sitting over here talking about how wonderful my husband is, and you sitting at me seething. That's not a friendship. I need... Tell me about you. <clears throat> Tell me about you. Tell me about your relationship. You don't want to hear about my marriage. I want to hear about your relationships. I want to hear about your marriage. I want to hear about that great date you had. No, you just want to talk about how you girls kicked it on the beach together. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm not going to any sexy beaches with females. I'm not doing it. I don't know about you, but beaches turn me on. I want to have sex when I go to the beach. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just being transparent. I don't want to go to a beach with a bunch of women. I don't want to go to an, any place exotic and warm. If it's exotic and warm, it turns me on. I want to have sex. So I'm not going with a bunch of women. 
some of these retreats, I would have loved to go, but it was nothing but women. Okay, if you said we're meeting in New York City, I'm like, okay, cool. I could I could meet in New York City. That's cool. But you said you want to go to Fiji, you want to go to uh some Hawaii. I want to go to Hawaii with my husband because I want to get it on under the sun in the sand. <laughs> I don't want to go with a bunch of women. <laughs> if that's how you get down. God bless you, honey. I don't want to do that. Sorry. But a lot of women, they love all female spaces. Now, mind you, my app is all female, but we love men up in there. <laughs> okay. Woo, we love men. And some of the spaces I've been in, I'm like, wait, do, do, do you all like men? Because there's so much negativity towards the masculine. I'm like, how can you be so feminine and you have such disdain for men? That's weird. Oh, you're attracted to masculine women. Got it. Okay. I'm just saying, but a matriarchal mindset is you like being surrounded by women all the time. You are uncomfortable with patriarchy. You're uncomfortable with the masculine. The only time you're comfortable with the masculine is if it's a masculine woman. Just saying. Got to watch that. Matriarchal mindset will get you in trouble in relationships because the man, he wants to be the head of his household. Whether he's paying all the bills or not, we all know they want to be the head of the household. So if that's the case, especially if you're Christian, you know he's supposed to be the head of the household. So with that being said, if you have a matriarchal mindset, that's going to rub you the wrong way because at your core, you believe men and women should be equal. Or... Even further, you believe women should have female supremacy. No, I don't believe women should have female supremacy. Oh, yeah? You want the man to cow, kowtow, step and fetch for you. You want him to be traditional while you get to come and go as you please and break the rules and have no decorum. But he must abide by traditionalism, which means pay the bills, be faithful, right? Lead the family. If something goes wrong, it's his fault. If it's your fault, it's everybody's fault, right? You want those kind of, you want that kind of setup, that kind of dynamic. If that's the case, that's matriarchal. In a patriarchal setting, the man is the head, period. And that also means the buck stops with him. So yet, while he gets the blame for everything, and you want him to have the blame for everything. He's fine with that. Because guess what? You're going to obey him. <gasps> Nicole said obey. Yeah, I'm going old school. <clears throat> I'm going old school, ladies. Gotta obey your man. Oh, Nicole's a pick me. I don't like what she said. Okay. Continue to work. Go ahead. You want to work past 65? Is your house going to be paid for by the time you retire? Because some of you might have to work past retirement. Are you okay with that? If you're not, you better listen. When you get a competent man who abides by patriarchy, you need to obey. I didn't say submit. I went old school, straight up old school. Love, honor, and obey. And if that's not what you're ready to do, then marriage might not be for you, baby. And that's okay. I don't want to obey. These men don't know how to lead. Then why are you dating men who don't lead? You date men who don't lead? Really? Still in 2023, you're dating men who don't lead? These men ain't got no money. You're dating men who don't have money? Wow. They, all these men are going to cheat. You're dating men who cheat? Yes, I'm going old school. Yes, obey. Mm hmm. Yes, obey. Obey, submit, acquiesce. Which pick a word? It's all the same. Obey. Love, honor, and obey. That's in your vows. You do know that. Now, a lot of you matriarchal women will have <laughs> will have the preacher <laughs> remove obey. Good luck with that. <laughs> Fellas, good luck with that. Good luck with any woman that removes obey from her, uh, uh, for her, you know, vows. I didn't remove anything. I'm a obey. Right. 
I, because I'm with a competent man. I'm with him because I believe in him. That's the ultimate compliment. To make you my husband is my ultimate compliment. I'm putting my life in your hands. That's the ultimate compliment. That's the ultimate compliment for you to marry a man and say, my life is in your hands. I trust you. I choose you out of all these men out here. I choose you. My body is yours. My box is yours. Cause that's what matters to men is your box. My box is yours. That, that, re that resonates with men. <laughs> and you're saying, I don't want any other man to touch my box, but you, oh, his ego is huge. Oh, wow. You need to spell it out to men. Nobody else is getting this box. Happy New Year to all of you, by the way. This is my first live after New Year's. But <clears throat> that's what it is. Right? You're telling him, I'm putting you above every other man. I'm forsaking all others, which again is in the vows. See, some of you haven't been to a wedding. You haven't seen a, a real marriage act itself out. But a real marriage, the woman is obeying, especially if he's competent and especially if he's handling business. She's she's shutting up and she's obeying. I know you hate that word because it makes you sound like a child because we associate obey with children. But a lot of times women act like children anyway. We want what we want. We throw a fit when we don't get what we want. Oh, if he doesn't do what we want, we act up. But so we're not acting like that, right, ladies? We're not acting like that. But as women, as wives, there comes a point where we just shut on up. Okay, the buck stops with you. You're paying the cost to be the boss. Got it. Cool. Then I expect you to work this out. We can rest our pretty little heads because he has it. He's got it. When a man says, I got it, I got it. We love it when a man says, I got it. So we have to let him get it, right? And a patriarchal mindset says, look, I don't need you to tell me how to do my job. Don't you hate it when you're micromanaged? Men, competent men don't like to be micromanaged, okay? I got it. I don't need you to micromanage. And that's all it said. When I say obey, when I say shut up, that's all I'm saying, ladies, is that, we don't micromanage our men. Just if he says he's going to do it, let him do it. Okay, so he doesn't empty the trash like you. Well, I don't empty trash. But if, let's say you empty trash, let him, if you want him to empty the trash, let him empty the trash the way he does it. Let him empty the trash. <clears throat> you don't like the way he washes dishes, but then if he doesn't wash dishes, then you're screaming and hollering that he won't step up. Which one is it? Pick one. That's what I mean by shut up and obey. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. If he says he got it, trust that he has it. And go rest your pretty little head. Worry about something else. Right? That's it. Now, if you're with a man who you don't trust him to work things out, then that sounds like a personal problem. That's not everybody else's problem. That's you. That's you, your choices, and who you're ending up with. All right? So... Get rid of that matriarchal mindset. I'm going to help you get rid of that because that's going to keep you single in 2023 and, and forward. Winter is here, ladies. It's not coming. It's here. And that matriarchal mindset, even I get tired of that. Even other women get tired of that. This whole hatred of men, all of that. And some of you have a valid reason to hate men because you've been violated. Go get some help. God does not want you to be on this earth upset and unhappy and mad. That's not why he created you to be walking around here, a tattered soul, a broken soul. Go get help. Heal your heart so God can send you the love that you need. But you got to prepare. Nobody's going to sit there and take beatings from you because you've been hurt. Nobody deserves that. Do you deserve to be, uh, to be beat up on because a man was hurt by another chick? No. So why would you do that to a man? Girl, go talk to somebody. Let them work that out. Go talk to the Lord first. And he will direct you to somebody that can help you. Please don't get a feminist therapist. That's even worse. 
That's like reinfecting the wound. <laughs> you want to go to somebody that's balanced, right? That's going to help you work through your pain because you want to get healed. You don't want another Band-Aid. You want to get healed, right? So talk to God first and the therapist because God doesn't want you walking around here upset. So get rid of the matriarchal mindset. <laughs> A girlfriend mindset, get your get you a financial strategy. I just talked about that. If you don't have a financial strategy, you're probably not ready to be a wife because everything in a wife is about constraint and order and self-control and self-discipline. If you don't have any self-discipline when it comes to money, marriage is not your, it's not your jam. If you just want to get married to a man with endless money, who's not going to check you on buying stupid stuff. Marriage is not for you. You want to stay a little girl and that's fine. Or better yet, you want to stay financially free and autonomous. That's cool. A lot of women are listening to this going, uh, ah, marriage is not for me. That's fair. Fair enough. Got it. You don't like people telling you how to spend your money and what to do. That's fine. Okay. Stay single. As a married woman though, you have to have self-discipline to know I can't go buy those shoes at Saks, they're on sale. Saks sends me emails like literally every single day. Um, I can't go get those shoes at Saks because I have to pay tuition or I have to buy groceries for the house or I have to do this and that. If you're a woman that says, well, he should be able to buy my shoes and the groceries. Good luck with that because there are going to be some times where you have to go, no, the house needs something. We need a new roof. I don't have time. I don't have the money right now. We don't have the disposable income enough for me to go buy those $350 loafers. We need a new roof. And if you're the type of woman that's going to sit and whine about having to put, you know, your selfish desires on hold, and sometimes it's not always selfish. It's just the wrong time. If you have a problem with prioritizing what you need to do, then you can't be married right now, sweetie, right? But you have no financial strategy. You have no savings account. Your credit is shot, right? You have debt. You owe everybody in town. I'm not judging you. <clears throat> I've been there, done that. I cleaned that stuff up. Cause, because there are certain places I wanted to live, certain things I wanted to do right? Clean it up. And a lot of things I did in my youth, I just never took the time to clean it up because I went straight from college to marriage. So I didn't really clean that stuff up except on the back end. <clears throat> now, guess how, what kind of help that was to enter into a marriage with shoddy credit? At least you can go into a marriage with good credit. I hate a lot of men ask, what do you bring to the table? Tell them good credit. <clears throat> Hello? Well, he shouldn't be using my money anyway. Well, if you're buying a home, they're going to ask for your information too. And In insurance, you have higher premiums because your credit is shot. You have higher credit because you have a bad driving record. I'm sorry. A higher premium because you have a horrible driving record. Right? I was able to tell Tony I have excellent credit and good driving history, good rental history, right? Be able to tell your man something. I have good rental history. If you don't have good credit, at least have good rental history. Pay your rent on time. Do it. <clears throat> if you have a mortgage, if you have property, tell them I have property. I have things I'm bringing to the table. Back in the day, they had dowries. I don't have a dowry, but I'm not coming to you with a with a tin cup begging. Well, he's supposed to be paying all the bills. And well, a lot of you won't get into a traditional marriage. A lot of you are going to be in a contemporary marriage, what I call a contemporary marriage, where both of you are sharing the load, your bread sharers. So the fact of the matter is when they get to talking that old foolishness, what do I bring to the table? What do you mean? What do I bring to the table? I'm not hurting you. Life is going to be better with me. You have to, you're basically going to have to let a man know where you stand. <clears throat> now I'm not talking about the losers. I'm talking about competent men. 
but you should be able to say, I'm financially taking care of myself. What does that mean? You're paying your bills month monthly, but if I pull your credit, you have a score below 550. That's problematic. Actually, below 600 is problematic. Fix it. Get it together. <clears throat> when you get your tax refund, when you get your bonus at work, uh, cash back, all of that stuff, get out of debt. Get out of debt, right? And even for women who plan to stay single, getting out of debt is smart. You have no personal development. Girlfriends have no financial strategy whatsoever. Day to day, you only live once, right? But girlfriends also have no personal development. They don't read books. They don't travel. Nothing is about culture with them. Everything is about having fun today. Worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. That's not the wife of a mind. That's not the, the mind of a wife. It's not the mindset of a wife. I do what I want. I handle my own business. I do whatever I want. That's not going to work. Lack of forward thinking. There's no personal development. No lack of forward thinking. You don't think ahead. You don't work things out. You just whatever. Just go with the flow. And while some of that is feminine, right? It's being fluid and going with the joys of life as a woman, Preparing for marriage is thinking about the future. All right, let me sit down and figure out what it is I want. No forward thinking whatsoever. Just day to day. Everything is about what I want right here, right now. That's going to be a problem. You have no health management systems, right? My friend Sasha, um, she helps women with their weight, um, with their um, new... Um, nutrition with their womb health and all of that you plan to have babies what's going on with your diet how are you eating you plan to be a mother are you working out are you getting getting in shape are you managing your health are you visiting a doctor on a regular basis are you eating healthy do you eat late at night are you smoking marijuana taking drugs how does your womb look? Have you been to the doctor and had him take a look at your womb to see if you can even have children? Do you know where you stand fertility wise? All of these questions you need to be asking yourself. Do you have fibroids? Are you at risk to have fibroids, breast cancer? All of these things you need to be asking yourself now, especially those women who plan to have babies. You need to know where you stand. Health management, get a diet. Doesn't have to be a literal diet. You're trying to lose weight, but you should have a, a system by which, okay, I can only eat these things on this day or I don't eat fried foods after this time. You need to have a system in place. Okay. <clears throat> Regular visits to the doctors. Have you had STD testing? Okay. Do you have an STD? How are you managing that? And a lot of women have no personal development because you have no increase in world knowledge. When you travel, it's to the same places. New York, Chicago, Miami, Atlanta, Houston, L.A. No culture trips. When you go to San Francisco, you're in the club. Why aren't you in the artsy areas of town? Why aren't you making connections with that? You're in Seattle, kicking it why aren't you checking out the music scene there the um the artistic part of that another place is on uh, tony and i's bucket list is santa fe mexico i've always wanted to go to santa fe mexico um just for the culture um and and albuquerque is yeah uh but i do want to go to santa fe um and I'm, I'm very familiar with Texas. I've been all over Texas. Um, but Santa Fe, I've always wanted to go to Santa Fe. That's a cultural trip, right? I want to go to, um, well, Scottsdale to play golf. But um, uh, Yellowstone. I want to go places for cultural trips. Are you doing things like that? Right? Um, one of my favorite cities on the planet is Naples, Florida. <laughs> I always told Tony, had I not got married, I, I was going to retire in Naples and just kick it because, you know, um, but when you go to Florida, do you just go party or do you 
uh, check out the cultural scene of the cities that you go to. I know Florida is kind of hard to do that. Um, you don't think culture when you go to Florida, unless it's Miami or someplace like that, or uh, Key West. Um, but places like that, when you go to uh, North Carolina, uh, there's a hotel, starts with a B, Biltmore. You know, I, I want to do stuff like that if I'm going to, uh, you know, places like that. Charlotte is one of my favorite cities on the planet. I uh, Not Charlotte. Charleston. Charleston is one of my favorite cities on the planet. I told Tony we have to go. That's a must. Um, that's a place I want to go to every year. But I go for the culture. I go for the experience. Like, um, 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 New Orleans. A lot of people go for the culture. Good move. Do that same same energy in a different city. Tulsa is a good place. A lot of oil men in Tulsa. Y'all sleep on Tulsa. I told the my following over there in Clubhouse, you all are sleep on Tulsa. Y'all stay sleep on Tulsa. Go ahead. <laughs> um, a next thing that's part of girlfriend mentality, girlfriend mindset, and nothing's wrong with having a girlfriend mindset is just that I never talk about being a girlfriend. You notice that? I never talk, I never, ever, 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 ever harp on being a girlfriend because I want you to think like a wife because when you think like a wife, you get married. Women who talk about being a girlfriend all the time, guess what? They end up being girlfriends all the time. I don't even want you to settle into girlfriend mindset. I want you to think like a wife as a single woman. When you go to the store, you buy a bunch of frozen meals. That's girlfriend mindset. Think like a wife. Get some vegetables. Get some meat. Put the meat up so that you have some for a rainy day, right? Put some money up, right? That's what a wife thinks like, right? You buy cleaning supplies and things like that. But so a girlfriend is temporary. Girlfriends don't always get promoted to be on a wife. That's why I don't want you to settle into the mindset of being a girlfriend. I want you to graduate from that, right? I just want you to skip over being a girlfriend and just be a wife, period. You're a wife that hasn't gotten married yet. That's how I want you to think, right? Girlfriends live in the here and now. You only live once attitude, right? City girl attitude. No consideration for the future. They don't really plan for the future. You can always tell an old city girl, an old whore, she has nothing put up. She's living day to day to day to day. She's always looking for her next trick, her next uh, um, something she can flip, something she can manipulate. She's always looking for the next sucker she can get some money out of. Never listen to old hoes and old city girls. That will get you nowhere. Do they ever, do they ever tell, Tony and I was watching Soft White, Soft White Underbelly. It's a, a YouTube channel. I think that's the name of it. Shout out to that channel. And there was an old prostitute on there. And she literally, instead of her saying, I want to teach the young women not to do what I did and what a hard life I had, she want to teach you how to be an old hoe. No, she doesn't want to teach you to avoid prostitution. She want to tell you how to be a good one. Listen. <laughs> Don't listen to them. She's miserable and wants you to be miserable. <laughs> She's mad that she had to get out of there on the track and sell it. And all you have to do is turn on your camera. So she wants to tell you how horrible you are. Listen, don't listen to old city girls and old whores. They will get you nowhere. They're upset. I'm telling you. Listen, even women who got divorced or women whose husbands died have a better story to tell than women who were never married and stayed city girls their whole life. You notice that? Even women who got a divorce can say, well, we did have a few years that were happy. If she married a total bum, that's the only way she didn't get any type of joy from marriage. <coughs> Probably, Angela, this one was a full-blown prostitute. 
I mean, she she had to be all of pushing 60, still talking about selling sex. Girl, if you don't get somewhere and sit down and take care of your grandkids, child, listen. And that's what they want to push on to the new to the young women. But they have no consideration for the future. She didn't plan for the future. She thought she'd be pretty forever. She thought her looks would never run out. Some of these women on YouTube, I'm laughing because time is on my side. You're not going to always be youthful and pretty, and pretty every day. And all of the insults that they tell me will be flipped on them one day. That's the joy of wisdom because, you know, all of the stupid stuff they say about you will be targeted towards them. Eventually, they live long enough. If they're blessed to live long enough, every mean thing that they said to an older woman will be said to them. Yeah. <laughs> Life is one big party to a girlfriend mindset. She takes no thought to what she puts online. She takes no thought to how she looks online. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And then when you go to her Instagram, she got her breast all out, bent all over, legs gapped open. You can see her nip nips, but the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. What Bible do you read, honey? Oh, I forgot. You don't worship. You don't worship God. Okay, so what religion do you have? There's no metrics. There's no, there's nothing to convict her of what's right or wrong. Nothing. You just do what you want to do. Life is just one big old party to you. You don't care how you conduct yourself with men. All kinds of men have pictures of you nude in compromising positions you never thought ahead. There was a uh, a, a, a movie, I believe, where the girl started dating a man who was a politician and he wanted to marry her. And then they found some dirty pictures of her. That's what I'm talking about. Not thinking ahead. Um, the next thing about girlfriend mindset is you have you don't have a basic understanding of how family and marriage is run. A lot of women talk, I'm married, I'm married, I'm married, and couldn't tell you the first thing about running a household. If you ask their husband, <coughs> she'd be thoroughly embarrassed. We need to start polling these husbands. Are you satisfied? I always ask Tony, are you happy? Are you satisfied? What can I do better? Oh, no, that goes against feminist ideology, asking a man, is he happy? Oh, God, I don't want anybody with me that's un un unhappy. Please, if you are unhappy, we got a problem. Let's work this thing out. Right? You don't have a basic understanding. And marriage is not just about serving your husband. It's about being a, a total woman, a total package. One, you can't be a good wife if you have a basic dislike of men. Everything out of your mouth about men is what they're going to do wrong, what they have done wrong, what they say wrong, what they do wrong, how they move. Going to have problems in your marriage because guess what? Your husband is a man. Going to have problems. Two, you're not making marriage a priority. You can't get married if marriage isn't a priority for you. You think you're going to just stumble into the end zone of a marriage? That happens for very few women where you have this man who hangs around for years and years and years for you to get a clue that he wants to marry you. You think there's going to be a, a Forrest Gump sticking around for you year after year after year until you figure it out? It might be. Well, some of you don't even want Forrest Gump. The men you want are not getting ready to sit around and wait for you to figure it out. I just told you, winner is here. That whole sitting around waiting for you to figure it out, figure out I'm a good guy. No, ma'am. Those winner is here. And even though you think he's stupid and green and he hasn't logged on to some weird person's YouTube channel or he hasn't gone to some men's conference or just because he hasn't done all that doesn't mean he isn't in the barbershop listing the men. Doesn't mean they aren't comparing notes. The barbershop is virtual now. He doesn't have to go into a barbershop and hear men chop it up anymore. Men are comparing notes about women and it's not coming back good. They're telling on you. 
And like it or not, the men are saying, wait a minute, you did what for her? And she wants this for me? Oh, no, I'm not giving her anything. Now, mind you, they both want you. But they're going to try to stall you out. Now, if men try to stall women out, guess who suffers the most? Take a wild guess. Last I checked, we're the ones that go through childbirth, right? <clears throat> I don't want to be 40 plus having babies. Now, some of you all are in excellent shape and some of you will have to do that. But uh, being a 40 plus year old woman, I assure you having babies in your 40s is not ideal. <laughs> that is not ideal. Young women, listen to me. Listen to me good. We suffer. If men stall us out, we suffer. We suffer the most. If they don't want to get married and they want to date us forever, who suffers? Now, mind you, they'll turn around and tell you you're too old for marriage. You waited too long. But they get to do that kind of crap. The only way you can circumvent that is to go on to the next dude. Go on to the next man. See if he has a better offer. That's the only thing you can do. If men start stalling women out, what does that world look like? I don't know about you, but I'm not going to the military. I don't think either one of my daughters want to go to the military. One of them, she thought about the Air Force for about five minutes. My youngest baby is not doing the military. That's not happening. My son volunteered for the military. Shout out to the U.S. Navy. My son is serving his country proudly. Love my son. That's a man right there. But my daughters, uh-uh. <laughs> nah. Ladies, do you want to serve in the military? Are you going to pick up a gun and hold a post? Let me know. God bless you. I'm going to pray for you and your endeavors. That won't be me. I'll send you a care package at best. I will send my prayers. But me out there with you, not happening. Mm -mm, no. Ladies, do you plan to send your daughters out there to war? Interesting. Do you plan to, to climb that scaffold and build that tall skyscraper? Did you ever see the doc? There's a documentary called New York. And they showed how the they had the immigrants doing it, y'all, uh, climbing the scaffold. Uh, those skyscrapers that you see in New York today, they would uh, climb those scaffolds and the men would fall to their death from the sky. Not doing it, uh-uh, uh-uh. Mm -mm. Oh, you just want me to obey you and you'll get up there and get, oh, okay, well, I'll obey. I'll stay back home and I'll fry the turkey up or fry the chicken up or, you know, whatever. I'm not getting up on no scaffold and building. Up. I'm not doing, I'm not pouring semen. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Some of you ladies want to get out there with the men. God bless you. God bless you. You want to work just as hard as a man. God bless you. May the force be with you. I'm not doing that. <laughs> God made men for a reason. Listen. <laughs> D said the only day Navy my daughter's going into is the old Navy. Listen. Okay. <laughs> what? That's why men have muscles. Look at my muscles. That's puny. I'm not built to be dragging cinder blocks over yonder and building up. Listen. You just want me to obey you? You just want me to cook? You just want me to stay in shape and have babies? Oh, you just want me to clean and cook? You just want me to have sex? Oh, psh, deal. <laughs> what? That is hard work. It's hard work having kids. It's hard work nursing my baby. It's hard work cooking and cleaning every single day. That's hard work. That's all you desire of me is to be available for you to be a good wife. Deal. Go, go shake that man's hand. Deal. You just want me to sit here and be pretty for you in public 
Really? Deal. Some of you, you like working. Go to work. Not talking to you. But the women who, <laughs> you, you want to come off the job. You want him to retire you from work, but you want to keep on talking. You can't have both both ways. You want to uh, have a voice in society and have your voice heard. Stay working because you absolutely have to have your voice heard. The only voice I need to hear, he needs to hear my voice when I ask for some money. He needs to hear my voice when I ask for, uh, I need some money to buy food for the house and things like that. I need a new dress. He needs to hear my voice when I'm talking about what color paint for the walls. He needs to hear my voice when I'm talking about what position we can do it tonight in like that's you can hear my voice doing that all that other stuff you need to hear my voice on where we want to live you need to hear my voice on what color the house is going to be you need to hear my voice on what kind of car i like other than that i don't what kind of voice do i need what what kind of voice do you need ladies put in the chat what kind of voice do you need outside of that you need, listen, the only voice I need is, can I have some money to buy those shoes? Why? Uh, they're having a sale? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. Like I have velvet. I have, um, you know, I have suede shoes, velvet. I have patent leather. I have straight leather. Um, I have flat. I have heels. I have wedges. I have boots. But see, this is a new kind of shoe this is a different kind of shoe and so i need it because it's a more updated version of all the other kind of shoes i have you can kind of understand that baby as a woman i represent you the best and i need that shoe so you know not too many men are gonna say no ladies that's a voice that's the only voice i need honey <laughs> where do you want to go on vacation that's my voice that's the kind of voice i want <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all fighting for? What kind of voice did you do you want? You want to voice in politics? Continue to work. The only voice I need in politics is, is my crime rate low in my community? Is Are the schools good in my community? Because normally if the schools are good, then that means the crime rate is low. That means the house values are high. See how that works. The only time I need a voice is to make sure when I go to the polls that my community is represented. That's all kind of what, what kind of voice do women need, honey? Ask these feminists that are yelling and screaming. What kind of voice do you need? Because the voice I have is what kind of sofa we need in our living room. What kind of pillows I want to deck, you know, my decor. What kind of cake are we going to have for my daughter's birthday party? That's the only kind of voice I need. <laughs> what kind of voice are you fighting for, ladies? Think about that. What kind of voice do you think you want? Huh? So uh, 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 a girlfriend's mindset is constantly in battle. Uh, uh, a girlfriend is constantly fighting. What are you fighting for? Right? So no man can even claim her as his woman because she's constantly fighting. Don't know what she's fighting for, but she's fighting. Fight, fight, fight. She has a basic dislike of men. She doesn't make marriage priority. I'm giving you the keys to get to get uh to get a husband. Make marriage a priority. Forget about what people calling you. Whatever. You think when I was walking down the aisle, I thought about people calling me a pick me shop? Do you think when you're at the bridal shop picking out your gown, you care about what some stupid broads on the social media called you a pick me? Do you think I cared about them uh, the, calling me, oh, you an old pick me? I'm an old pick me that wore this really, really, really nice gown down the aisle and had a really, really nice wedding. Do you think I cared? No, they're not going to care, Miss V. They're not going to call you a pick me because you're not, you're not even going to hear them. You're going to be so busy planning your wedding, trying to pick out what neighborhood you want to live in. You won't even care. Don't hear it. Sorry. Don't hear it. <laughs> right? If you join the uh, the Air Force, Veneva, make sure you get a really, really nice job. The Air Force is the best place for women to go if you're going to go. 
I would say, I mean, if that's something you want to do, I would say get a job on the Air Force Base instead of getting in the Air Force Base. But you, you do what works for you. <laughs> but listen, who cares? Who, who, Angela, will you care when you're picking out your, when he's putting that slide and that ring on your finger, are you going to be like, but they call me a pick me. Do you care? <laughs> Mrs. Beffer, do you care? They call you a pick me when you were moving into your new home. Don't hear it. Right. You too busy living life and enjoying life with your man. More importantly, do you care what they call you when you roll over in the morning and see your husband? Do you care what they call you? You shouldn't care. And I'm telling you, you shouldn't care. Don't care. Who cares? Girlfriends with girl, men with uh, women with girlfriend mentality, they are have a mindset of the hookup culture. Everything is transactional. What what can I get out of a man? How can I get over? What can he do for me? None of that has anything to do with marriage. It's all about them, 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 them. them. A selfish mentality, selfish mindset. They have a princess mentality. Always taken care of. People are going to go to war for me. And I don't have to do anything but be pretty and be this little innocent thing. Innocent little dove. A queen is the most powerful piece on the board. Sometimes a queen has to be sacrificed. But in order to be a queen, you got to have a king. And there is no game without a king. You can even push the, you can push the king in the game. You can have him all over the board. And the king can be a very useful piece. He can, but that queen is all over the place. <laughs> knocking folks out. When that queen comes out from that back rank and she start knocking pieces off, folks' eyebrows go up. Uh-oh, that queen is out. It can't be good. It can't be good. That queen is taking folks out. And up, where on the board is there a princess? Where on a chessboard is there a princess? You have more pawns. You have pawns. You have rooks. You have knights. You have bishops. A queen and a king, but you don't have a princess. Why? Why is that? Can anybody tell me why there's no princess? On a chessboard. Take a wild guess. Just take a stab at it. <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The princess doesn't matter. Doesn't matter why she's not there because she doesn't matter. The queen matters. A girlfriend thinks like a princess. She's not, she can be replaced. She doesn't matter. She has no power. That queen, on the other hand, that queen can make a break a game. If that queen is off her square, if she's not doing what she's supposed to do, that king falls. And if you think like a princess, you don't matter. <laughs> uh, Lacey said pawns are like princesses because they are dime a dozen that's one way to look at it princesses just they don't matter like that the queen on the other hand why do you think pawns always get promoted to a queen more so than any other piece on the board why do you think a pawn is fighting to get to the other side of the board to get promoted Because the queen, they know the queen is mobile. She can go right, she can go left, she can go diagonal. Up, back, to side to side. The queen is powerful. Princesses don't know their power. They don't know their potential. So they have no power. They want to fall back and be cute in the, prince, in, the, in the castle. The queen is out there. She's in the battle. She's in the throes of battle. Being feminine, just all over the place. 
boom, boom, boom. You can't attack my king. You can't get at my king. I'm here for a reason. I'm his helpmate. You can't get nobody, 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 nobody talks crazy about Tony in my presence. I will, I will <laughs> listen. <laughs> you don't talk crazy about Tony. When I start doing this, shut up. Don't talk bad about y'all. Look, that's my king. You don't do that. You don't do that. Uh-uh. Not my king. Talk about your king. You don't talk about my king. You get removed off my board. When you talk about my king. Listen. <laughs> Not my king. Whatever. I'm, I'm coming for you. I'm knocking you over. You're getting knocked off the board. Removed. Right? That's my king. That's my king. Queens don't fight. They just remove. Just remove pieces. Move pawns. They hem you up. They threaten you. That's what queens do. You see that queen coming off that back rank? You like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. What are they getting ready to do? Uh-oh. That queen is coming out. Y'all need to play chess. Chess is a life game. When that queen comes off that back rank, it's getting ready to be trouble, trouble, trouble. And that's what happens. You put your mouth on Tony and it's going to be trouble, trouble. Right? That's how it's supposed to be. You two are supposed to be a cohesive unit. Right? People have been talking about me for years. I'm, I'm, I'm deaf and dumb, blind to it. But when Tony, uh-uh, uh-uh, my king? All right, bet. I got you. Mm -hmm, I got you. When I come off that back rank, all right, it's going to be trouble, trouble, <laughs> right? And that's how your man should feel. My woman has my back. A girlfriend is like, well, I mean, I mean, she's just so apathetic, like just so nonchalant. She doesn't care. She has no invested interest. <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> look that's what a queen is for he has to know that you're in the game you're vested in this game and when the queen falls tomorrow's your fifth anniversary congratulations miss bedford congratulations when that queen falls y'all when that queen falls the king's in trouble he's in trouble trouble why do you think men don't want to get married because they know if they marry a woman who can't get out there and do what she's got to do as a queen, he falls. Hello? You got to act like a queen. He doesn't want to marry a princess. A princess is out of sight, out of mind. In the heat of battle, where is she? Up in the castle being pretty, waiting on gifts? A queen is out there. Who can I knock off? Who can I knock off? Oh, 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 you attacking my king. Okay, I'm coming for you. I'm coming off that back rank. I'm going to get you. I got you this way. I got you that way. I got you this way. Come on with it. That's what a queen does. Look, and if a man feels like you're a princess, he can't marry a princess. He needs a queen because he knows she's got my back. She's looking this way, that way. She's looking behind her. She's looking in front. She's looking on the side. Baby, that ain't your friend. He did this. He did that. Baby, I don't like that. Then I, you trust him? I don't trust him. Uh, that's what a wife does. That's what a health meet does. That's a queen. A princess is like, oh, you had a bad day? Okay, does that mean I'm not going to get the shoes like you promised? That's a princess. Oh, you don't feel good? Does that mean we can't go out tonight? Princess. <laughs> a queen is like, what can I do? How can I step in and represent the best way I can? You remember, was that a Cosby show when Claire went to give uh, Heathcliff's speech? Or was it the other way around? I think Claire went to go give the speech for Cliff. Can you step in in his stead and make him look good? Or will you embarrass your man? Oh, God, please don't let her open her mouth. She's going to say something stupid. Is that you? Or are you going to make your man look good like, that's mine, that's my, that's my wife. Yeah, that's my wife. 
not just because you look good, because you, you represent the family very well. Your daughters are going to be excellent women because of you. That's the kind of wife you need to be. Baby, I got your back. What do I need to do? Most of the time, when a woman steps up to help a man, most of the time, when you have a really, really good, competent man, he's going to go, I can't have her doing this too much. Uh-uh. I appreciate your help, baby. He just wants to see the effort. He just wants you to see. He just wants to see, do you have his back? Do you have his best interest at heart? Right? Girlfriends do not. Girlfriends think temporary. They think, what can I get out of this man? What kind of date? How much money can he spend on this date? Right? As a, a, a woman that's trans, um, transforming from a girlfriend to a wife, you have to understand the sacrifices wives make. Man. First, first um, 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 sacrifice I made was leaving Atlanta. And you all know I loved Atlanta. Every time, every time my mouth opened, I said, Fila, forever I love Atlanta. I love Atlanta. The sacrifice I made was to move to Ohio. I kind of like Ohio a lot. Low key, don't tell Tony. I kind of like Ohio. Do I want to stay here forever? No, I like the South. I'm a Southern belle at heart. But and we plan to move back soon. But I, I like Ohio, mostly because I love him. So I'm making the best of it. I like Ohio. I like going through the corn maze and visiting the farms. <laughs> I like it. I'm corny. What can I, what can I say? I'm corny. Uh, so I like Ohio. I like the snow. I had a white Christmas. I hadn't had a white Christmas since I was a little girl. I was so giddy. Y'all couldn't tell me nothing. I was so giddy. I had a white Christmas, y'all. But listen, that was a sacrifice. Some women are not willing to make a sacrifice. Atlanta to Ohio. Some of you all, when you meet a man, you'll have him move into your city. You'll have him moving across. No, you're supposed to move where he is. You are supposed to, but you are not really ready to make sacrifices. You don't want to make sacrifices to move out of the city into a good suburb where the schools are good. You want to be near the turn up spot. Some of you girlfriends need to move to small towns. You'd actually have more success. You're living in the big city. You've been overshadowed. It's too competitive. You need to move to small towns. You don't want to move to small towns because you want to be near the turnover spot. And I understand you're single. The problem with that is that when you become a wife, Sometimes you have to make that move. And I'm telling you, it's a buyer's market. So if your man, uh, Angela, says she might have to move to Minneapolis, go. You want me to refer you to some good moving companies, Angela? Got you. Go. Go where your man is at. And I'm pretty sure once you tell him you're willing to move, relocate, you'll get that ring. I'm just saying. Right? So... As I showed, told, I told Tony, look, I'm willing to move. I'm, I'm good. I've, I enjoyed my life. I had the single girl life. I lived in Buckhead. I was in the middle of all the happenings. I had events. I went to events. I met people. You know, I, I really had a good time. I'm good. Now I'm going into the another phase of my life. I'm good. Once you tell a man that, a ring is going to come. Why not? She's willing to come move to Texarkana, Texas for me? <laughs> Shout out to Texarkana, Texas. Some really good people in Texarkana. But you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, right? You have to be willing to make the sacrifices for your marriage, okay? Let's get through this. <clears throat> Practicing homemaking and decorating. As a single woman, practice cleaning up that bathroom. In that kitchen, get those dishes out of that sink. As a single woman, I had settled into being a single woman where I would leave a cup or a plate or something every now and then. Listen, as a married woman, I have a, a look, I want to wake up to a clean, clean kitchen. So that means at night, the kitchen must be clean. And when my daughter is here, she'll keep it clean for me at night. That's one of her chores. But for the most part, 
My kitchen is clean. I do not like waking up to a dirty kitchen. Right? That bathroom needs to be clean. Your man comes over, he want to use, and of course, it never fails. Whenever your house is dirty and funky, somebody always wants to come in and use the restroom. And so you stand in there making excuses. Well, you know, um, uh, you know, you know, I was in a rush and so excuse the bathroom. They can tell you haven't cleaned in a while. You have makeup and crud all over the sink and the toilet is a mess. Oh my God. I'm getting nauseous just thinking about it. Your tub has a ring around it. Soap scum. It stinks. It's dirty and funky. Haven't emptied the trash. You have hairballs everywhere. You know who I'm talking about. If this is you, get in there and clean that toilet. Get in there, clean that bathroom. How are you, you going to have a husband and that bathroom is dirty and funky? The bathrooms haven't been my Look, that refrigerator had crud all on the side. You got food in there for six months ago. Girl, if you don't clean that refrigerator out every week. <laughs> see, your girlfriends, that's a girl I understand, girl. I'm right that. See, they'll, they'll you know, y'all slap fives and, and he, he, and ha ha. But it, it's not funny when the man you love come over and see that dirty funky toilet. See, laundry not being done. Dirty panties all over the place. Listen, that's not wife. Get in the habit of cleaning. Now, some of you have a dirty, funky, filthy car. Why is your vehicle dirty? Girl. Sometimes I get in some cars and I'm afraid to sit down. And I'm like, I'm riding in the car like this. Listen. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> Trust me. <clears throat> I've been there. I've been there. But sometimes people pop up. Somebody said, why would you invite people over when it's dirty? Because people pop up, especially when I lived in Atlanta, I lived in Buckhead. And, and my close friends knew, right? Oh, she's right there off of Roswell Road. And sometimes I would get pop-ups. Not often, but sometimes I did. I had to keep my place popping. I couldn't have food sitting out, food from the night before sitting out, trays and, no, man, your counters are dirty. Listen, get that Mrs. Myers and get in there and clean that kitchen. Shout out to Mrs. Myers, 409, that, that stove. Get that, that stainless steel cleaner and clean that microwave and that refrigerator because I have stainless steel. Get that stainless steel stuff off there, crud and grease. Clean that refrigerator out. I have a rule in my house. No food in the refrigerator that's over two days old. And during the holidays, it was one day because we needed every space, all the space we needed in the refrigerator. Um, listen, where's your vacuum cleaner? If you don't have a vacuum cleaner, you better learn how to sweep good. Get you a good iron. Learn how to iron properly. Some of you may not be able to afford to go and get dry clean. You should be able to learn how to steam from home. Learn it. You can learn how to dry clean on uh, YouTube. Did you know that? Can you cut corners? Can you wash your own hair, do your own nails to cut corners, say bunny? Or are you going to be a princess? You have to have everything all the time. Because when money uh, when money crunch comes, are you able to adjust? Can you read more books instead of watching TV? Huh? Are you able to make those adjustments? See, a girlfriend is not ready for adjustments. She has clothes all over the place. Even as a single woman, I got up and made my bed every day. Guess what? As a married woman, I get up and make the bed. Even I'm at home all day. That bed is made up when I get out of it. The bed is synonymous with sleeping and other stuff. Not for sitting and chilling. <laughs> you get up and make your bed. Clean your floors. Wipe down your counters. Dust. There's no other place on the planet dustier than Georgia. I promise you. And I dusted all the freaking time. Every day I had to dust. dust, 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 dust. 
some stuff I just gave up trying to dust because it was just too much. I'm in the habit of dusting. You should be able to run your you run your finger across the surface and not have dust come up. Dang, Nicole, are we in the military? Almost. You want to be a housewife? You have no idea how we clean. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And even if you're not planning to be a housewife, you should be in the habit of cleaning. Well, I'm going to have me a maid, Nicole. Okay, what do you do in the meantime? We have a housekeeper come in and do the deep cleaning, <clears throat> like cleaning the floor floor, the uh, floorboards, the doorposts, the vents, the uh, ceiling fans, you know, all of that, you know, cleaning behind appliances and stuff like that. All that deep cleaning. Um, but I'd straighten up. So that's, I mean, what do you do in the meantime? You're just not going to straighten up? <laughs> like, Right? Girlfriends date with no goal. They have no goal. I hate dating with intention and dating with purpose. And so many women have used those phrases. You don't have a goal. Do you have a goal in mind for marriage? Do you have a goal? in? Why are you dating? Is it just to go out and have a good time, meet new people? Do you intend to be married? What, 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 what's your goal? What's your end game? You have no end game. You have no goal. That's girlfriends. Women who are wives, we have future wives, it was what I call you. You have goals. You have an end game. The end game is marriage. Period. Okay. There's a long duster. Somebody said they need to clean their ceiling fans. There's a long duster you can get on Amazon for like 10 or 20 bucks. And um, it, it extends and it's like a long, like a duster. And you can just clean those... Um, Ceiling fans. I clean my ceiling fans probably once every couple weeks. So, right? But making your intentions clear from the beginning. Don't leave it up to the man to try to figure out what it is you want. I never let a man try to figure me out. One, you can't. So I'm just going to tell you what I want. I told Tony, I don't care if I'm 58. I don't care if I'm 72, 95. I'm not going to date forever. That's just not what is, that's just not me. That's not my, that's, I, I don't even feel good doing that. So I'm just telling you, <laughs> I let it be known. That's, I, that's saying I want to be married without saying I want to be married, but I'm not dating forever. What do I look like being 40 plus years old, still dating and dating and dating and me and coming over and sleep. What kind of example is that for my daughters have me in, in and out and I'm almost 50 what does that look like? I'm almost half a century old and I have men in and out in front of my daughters. I'm supposed to have my, my son respecting women when he sees me with this man and that man and that man and that man. I still care what my kids think about me. I'm like, if they meet you, it's because we're getting married. Not because you're the new flavor of the week. No shade to women who do that. I'm just saying... For my daughters, I wanted to say it's bad enough I'm divorced. Now I got to have men in and out. But <laughs> that's weird. Well, mama be getting it in. I don't want them to ever be saying that about me. <laughs> Come on. You want your daughters to, you're supposed to set the tone for womanhood for your daughters, right? That's how they learn how to be a good woman. It's from you. And if they see you having men in and out, Tuesday is Mr. Rucker. Thursday is Mr. Davis. Friday is whoever. Wild card. Saturday is Mr. Brown. Sunday is Deacon Boot and Shoe. Like, come on. <laughs> and then you're surprised that she's a city girl. Come on, ladies. We set the tone for womanhood. We're the first example of womanhood our daughters are going to see. You can try to convince us otherwise, but the fact of the matter is your daughter is looking at you more than anybody else, your daughters. And if they see you got this man and that man, this dick and that dick and Tom Dicks and Harry's and all this kind of carrying on, what is she supposed to think? I know, I know, I know. We live in a society where women just do what they want. Right. And then you wonder why she can't keep a husband. Then you wonder why she can't keep a man. Then you wonder why she's all over the place. Because you were so busy doing what you're doing, you weren't teaching her how to be a woman. 
That's where we come in. That's where we come in, ladies. We got to teach them. Not this whole do as I say, not as I do mentality. That's whore babble. Write that down. Whore babble. Don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. Do as I say, not as I do. That's whore babble that has kept a generation of women single and miserable. Living like whores and don't even know they're living like whores. They're just emulating what their mamas did, what their grandmoms did. They had no idea that they were living a whore life, trying to figure out why men won't take them seriously. Well, I'm just doing, in their minds, they're like, I'm just doing what my mom did. I'm just doing what my, what you know, I'm just doing what my aunties did and my grandma did. And <clears throat> That's crazy. We set the tone for that. You can't learn how to be a wife on the job. You have to prepare to be a job. The Bible says he that findeth a wife. Didn't say he that findeth a girlfriend. Can't learn on a job. Some things you can. You can learn how to be a better cleaner. You can learn how to be a better nurturer. You can learn some things on the job. You can get better on the job. But you, you don't know what you don't know. And if you get married thinking that you can do whatever and it doesn't matter what you don't know, you're going to have a lot of problems. Going to have a lot of problems. Can't learn how to be a wife on the job. That's not what being a wife is for. He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. Not he that findeth a girlfriend is going to figure it out. That's not what the Bible says. Dating men who don't want marriage is what girlfriends do. Future wives, we don't date men who don't want marriage. Period. Once you say, uh, what do you bring to the table? I don't want about, about marriage. I don't want... Once he says any of those catchphrases, I'm out. I'm like Speedy Gonzalez. Vroom! Like the road runner. I'm out. There's nothing else to talk about. You don't want to marry me? You just want to lay up with me and have sex? How old are you? We're not in high school in the back of the car watching the movie. Like, grow up. You still acting like the mean kid on the playground who didn't get the ball, that you didn't get a chance to play with the ball before the recess bell rang. You just mad. That has nothing to do with me. If you don't want to talk about marriage, we have nothing else to talk about. She says she's struggling dating. I get dates, but they're not going anywhere. Stick around. We got you. We got you. Make sure you get the app. So that we can get some more one-on-one -on -one time, some more, some group clinics. I'm going to have that on the 25th. Um, and definitely be here for the marriageability room on Thursday. Um, but you can't learn how to be a wife on the job. And dating men that don't want marriage is going to keep you from being married. Okay. And dating men who are not moving the relationship forward. That's going to be a problem. You're, you're moving linear, you're not moving forward. And on Clubhouse, I talked about that. Moving linear and not moving forward is a problem. A lot of women think that they're moving forward when they're just moving linear. You're just moving side to side, but you're not moving forward. Forward is progress. Moving linear is just complacency. And a lot of women think that they're just happy that it's moving, but you're not moving forward, you're moving linear. Meaning your girlfriend... And you want to move forward. And moving forward means we're moving the relationship forward. So we're graduating from girlfriend, boyfriend to exclusively dating and recording for marriage, right? Girlfriend who's moving linear is instead of moving forward, like we're going to be um, exclusive. He says, well, we can move in together. Now, a lot of women in their mind will get confused because they're like, well, Nicole, that is exclusivity because we're living together. That is forward movement, movement because we're in together. It's forward, but it's, fo it's, it's linear, but it's linear right into a brick wall because what happens after you move in together? 
I know more couples who broke up after living together than I know who actually got married after living together. Nicole, people can get married after living together. They sure can, but at what rate? I know more couples who got broken up after living together than I do the uh, who didn't live together. I'm just saying, you want to work with those odds, good luck. But you're moving, but you're moving linear right into a brick wall. So then you're going to try to move forward from living together. What's moving forward? Get married. You know what he's going to say? We're already living together. Marriage is just a piece of paper. Why do you need to complicate things? We've been living happily ever after. We put a title on it <coughs> and involve the government. It's all going to go horrible after that. Now what? See how linear, see how linear movement doesn't. So then you still hound him and he says, well, why don't we bring another person in the bedroom? Is that moving forward? You think it's moving forward because now he's talking about that's not moving forward. That's moving linear. You're not moving forward. And if anything, you're moving backwards. <clears throat> you see how linear movement isn't good for a woman? It's only forward thinking. If it's not forward movement, get out. Get off that train. Dish that train. Let that train run into that wall by itself. Right? L forward movement. Are we moving into a more exclusive uh, relationship where we're talking about marriage? Great. So we've been dating and courting. We've been courting for a few months. We're moving into marriage. He proposed. That's moving forward. Boom, boom, boom. We met, we dated, we courted, we got married. That's the end of it. Anything outside of that is linear. It's lateral. That's it. Period. Think about that. That's what I teach you in the inner beauty movement. We met, we dated for a hot second, we courted, and we got married. Four steps. Don't complicate it. Met, date, court, marriage. Period. Anything outside of that, we are not moving forward. And if he's not moving forward, you ditch that turkey. <laughs> ditch that turkey. My nose is beginning to run. So we are going to have to call this quits. But make sure that you are, um, make sure you download the app. That's one way to get caught up. And if you don't have a lot of money for the courses, that's fine. Um, you want to get familiar with the inner beauty movement before you make that investment. That's fine. You want to be around like-minded women. You want to learn about the preppy girl life. You want to get preparation to be a housewife, a wife in general. Um, you want to be around other feminine women. You want to work on your femininity. Get in the app. Let us work with you. Um, you want to get the course. That's fine too. <clears throat> You're more than welcome to purchase the course. All right. It's an investment. Um, that lets me know that you're serious and you get me for 90 days, unlimited. Okay. I have um, some ladies enrolled in that and we're working. We're moving forward, right? So ladies, I'm excited about 2023. No, no backwards looking. No worrying about the past. Don't beat yourself up about the past. We're moving forward. We're moving forward. No linear thinking, no beating yourself up. Get out of those places beating you up as a woman. Get out of those places telling you too, you're too old, you're too fat, you're too ugly, you're whatever. Whatever you need to know, you'll learn it over here, but with love, okay? And we'll get you to the promised land. When I, when I put my mind to it, thank you so much for the well wishes. When I put my mind to something, I get it done. I get her done. And if marriage is what you want, we'll get you there. But I need you to work with me to get it done. All right. And put in the chat, I'm a future wife and my husband is looking for me. Just go ahead and type that in the chat. I won't replay the chat, but I will replay the video. So nobody will see you writing in the chat. I'm a future wife and my husband is looking for me. Write that down. Put that on a a sticky note or something and remember that I'm a future wife and my husband is looking for me. The app is called the feminine elite society app. You can find the app on Google play and Apple stores. 
I'm looking forward to meeting all of you young ladies. Um, people from all over the world are joining. I'm excited. Going to have some exciting new guests coming in doing work inside the app. Hopefully, Sasha will be in there with womb health. She's had some of her clients become mothers due to her expertise on womb health. I'm going to have some women coming in who are gardeners. Hopefully, hopefully, Lacey will work with me. She'll come on the channel and as well as the app. Um, I'm looking forward to partnering with other women in the femininity space to strengthen our momentum going in to 2023, heading into 2023. I'm a wife and my husband is looking for me. Get that in your brain. You are a wife, not a girlfriend, not a fling. <laughs> You're a wife. When you are a wife, you convince yourself you're a wife, you start moving like a wife. You start dressing like a wife. That's another thing. Start dressing like a wife. Some of you dress like good time girls and girlfriends. You got the whole good time girl, girlfriend look down pat. Some women, I can't believe that they're married because of how they dress, but I digress. Hey, if your husband likes it, I don't see it. Hey, I have nothing to say about it. But most men that I know that are upstanding men in the community want their wives to look like they have some decorum and some class and some elegance and sophistication. They don't want to look like their wife charges by the hour. I don't know. Maybe that's just an old school thing. I don't know. Maybe these young cats like their women looking like street walkers. I don't know. Like they walk the track. I don't know. But wives have a distinct look. You can tell a wife from a whore. Right. That's a distinction. That's why men take themselves off the market, because he's getting something different from the wife than he can get from all the other women. He wants her sexiness to be his. And you want you want his wallet to be yours. So you want his sexy. So he wants your sexiness to be his. Right. Right. But somehow they got the ring. Yes, somehow. What kind of husband do they have? They already have a husband who allows them to display any kind of way. Putting their wives in danger. You want you want men salivating over your wife? Okay. Hey, if you like it, I have nothing to say about it. <laughs> but I'm going to play the safe role because I know more women who have gotten married modestly dressed and dressed like uh, sophisticated women that I know who dress like whores. Who no. So I'm just saying you can do, uh, you can kind of emulate and follow the exception or you can follow the rule. The, the rule, the rule is kind of made by the exception because the fact that it's a few women who got married dressing like whores versus millions of women who got dressed modest, modestly. I'm just saying, what are we going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to waste your time betting on the exception? Or are you going to go with what works? And I'm telling you, as a girlfriend, you're going to gamble. And you're going to want to do what you want to do. And you're going to hope that it, it ends in your favor. Right? But when you start thinking like a wife, you do things just because it's right. You do things because... You have a more wholesome view of the world because you're wholesome. Wholesome women raise wholesome daughters. Right? Well, there have been some women who raise whores. Eh, exceptions make the rule. Right? You can be a good mother. It's okay to be a good woman. It's okay. Listen. <clears throat> Don't let anybody knock you off your square. I'm going to say this. It's two o'clock. We've done two hours. I'm going to say this. Do not let other people knock you off your square. If you're a good girl, stay a good girl. Don't let them gaslight you by telling you you dress like an old lady. You dress boring. You dress like a librarian. You dress like a corny chick. Let them call you whatever you want to call you. And I guarantee you when you send me that message, Miss Nicole, Miss Nicole, I got a ring. Will you be caring about what they think and what they called you? 
No, you won't. Nope, not at all. When you're planning, when you're at the bridal store trying on different dresses and you're standing in front of the mirror and you turn around with your family to go, is this the one? Is this the dress? Do I say yes to this dress? Will you care about what these horrors on social media call you? No, you won't. When you're when you're announcing to the world, it's a boy, it's a girl, we're going to have a baby. Will you care about what these whores told you and called you? No. When he's taking you to Santorini for your first year wedding anniversary, would you care what these lonely bats on social media called you? No. So don't get off your square. Don't stop reading your Bible. Don't stop doing what you've been doing. Right? Do what you know is right. Let the naysayers call you. They call me every name under the book. You born, you old, you this, you that. But I'm taken care of. That beats whatever name you can call me. <laughs> call me names. <laughs> and I'm all that. And when I log off of this, I'm going to go get me some honey tea. And I'm going to um, finish folding these towels. And then I'm going to <laughs> fold it, finish folding these out. I'm going to drink this tea and curl up and edit this video that I think you all will like. I'm going to edit this video. That's what I'm going to do. Curl up. Why do I have the ability to do that? Because that's what pick me's get to do. Pick me's get picked. And when they get picked, they have a softer life by definition. Do I care what people are calling me on social media? No. And you shouldn't either. Stick to your guns. Stick to you know what is right. Get what God has for you and let the naysayers talk. They're, they talked about Jesus, so they're going to talk about you too. Right? Oh, I have to plan my um meal. I think we're going to have something light today. Not sure. I definitely need to get dinner underway. So I can relax. Probably put something in the uh, oven. Right? Your time is coming, Shanita. This, I'm not just talking about my life. This is going to be your life. You're going to send me a message. Oh, Nicole, what, what should I make for dinner today? That's the kind of stuff we're going to be talking about in the app. You all congregating, talking about men and how horrible they are. That's boring. Let's talk about what we're going to cook for dinner. Let's talk about what store is having sales. That's what I want to talk about. Y'all go over there and talk about the losers. You all are still dating. Meanwhile, I'm going to go over with these pick me's and pick Misha's over here so we can talk about what appliances we're going to get. Let's talk about what store is having sales because my daughter needs some new dresses. My son needs some new shoes. What store has the best school supplies? Look, that's what wives talk about. Not horrible men. Been there, done that. <laughs> there you go. She said, I'm pick me. I got picked. Now I'm a wife. That's how I view it. Exactly. When you're out with your husband, are you thinking about what these lonely birds on social media are calling you? Oh, you ugly. I'm ugly and picked. What? That's salt and sugar because they want to be you. Come on now. She says she's been practicing baking breads and pasties. Listen, that's another thing. I want to get a bread maker. You are, what's the best appliance? Um, Who has the best bread maker on the market? I want to get me a bread maker, right? That's what we talk about. We don't talk about endless stupid conversations. Listen, Okay. What cakes should we make? I want to try the cinnamon roll cake. Have you all had that cake before? I want to try the cinnamon roll cake. That's my next little venture. So y'all pray for Tony that I don't make him sick. <laughs> I'm not that bad, y'all. <laughs> I'm not that bad. No, but I do practice. And so I want to practice that recipe. Uh, and I want to try making some bread from hand. Because that's just not my deal. But um, with a bread maker, I think all things are possible. 
Lacey says she hates bread makers because they leave a a, a paddle hole uh, in the bottom. Ew. Okay. Hummingbird cake. Okay. My mother used to love hummingbird cake. So yeah, ladies, that's what we talk about. What recipe? What recipes are we doing? We leading into Valentine's Day. Um, I don't want you all feeling some type of way. Your day is coming. Hang with me. Your day will be sooner than later. All right. All right. Yeah, I made a cake for Christmas. It came out really good. Just a simple white cake. It was really good. It was really good. I said, wow, I have some little baking skills there. <laughs> I like to cook more than I like to bake, to be honest with you. I like cooking more than I like baking. So my baking is, you know, but I like to cook. So Look, being a housewife is not about being perfect. I know you all like to watch videos of people who have seemingly perfect at housekeeping. Look, whatever. Let them inspire you, not make you feel bad. Find you four or five good recipes. Get those down. And then five, four, uh, four or five more. Get those down. That's all you need to do. Men are not asking for a perfect woman. They want you to try. They want you to be good at something. Right. If you're not good at cooking, be good at cleaning. Right. Well, make that bed up. Those military corners. Change your sheets at least twice a week. I change them every other day, every two or three days. Right. Can't do it that often. Do it at least once a week. Right. But get in there and do it. Get in there. With that being said, I love you all. Thank you so much. My nose is starting to run. So um, let me get medicated. This cold is just lingering. So I, I might need to do something, get some antibiotics or something. Um, <laughs> we're on the tail end of it. That's why I'm like, I was able to talk this long. So I know I'm getting better. But still, um, with that being said, I don't want to push it. Um, we should be back here Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If not, I will keep you abreast. If, if we're not here Thursday, we'll be here Friday. So just make sure you hit the bell. Hit always that you're notif uh, notified when we go live. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate that. Shout out to all of you who followed me over here from the other platforms. I appreciate that as well. Thank you to all my mods. You are the best in the business. I appreciate you. And thanks to all of you all who hung out with me, who sent me messages and who um, sent me um, <laughs> cash out. Thank you so, so very, very much. Remember, I love you and Jesus Christ loves you. And until the next time, keep the faith, everybody. Peace out. Thank you.